I really wanted to ignore Genspar. I'm already paying for way too many AI subscriptions and I have more AI tools in my database than I even know what to do with. But every single time I tried to look away, they added more features that made me come back. And after a while, I realized that this is becoming an AI Swiss knife. In this video, I'm gonna walk you through seven practical examples using Genspar. From deep research, to building web apps, to generating lifestyle images at scale, and even doing detailed lead searches, all within one single tool. And just to be crystal clear, this is not a sponsored video. I just genuinely think that this tool deserves your attention. The more you use it, the more you realize how powerful it really is. Let's get into it. Now, before we go into the seven use cases, I'm just gonna go through an overview of what GenSpark is, how it works, and what are the different functionalities that you have at your fingertips. So if we zoom out just a bit and go to the right-hand side, I took some screenshots of the UI so you can get a better idea of what to look for. So when you go into GenSpark initially, you're gonna notice a few core functions and the coolest ones are the newest ones. So first you have AI slides, which at first glance kind of looks like you're gonna build something like a gamma where it's more cookie cutter, minimalistic types of designs. But once you start building with it, you actually will realize that you can build really beautiful sets of slide decks. When it comes to AI sheets, this is a newer feature as well, where you can drag and drop any form of CSV and have it do unbelievably deep analysis. And what's interesting is it turns your table and brings it alive and adds all these different features and additional tables to provide as much context as possible. If you've ever used Claude data analysis or you've given a task to ChatGPT 3 and tried to create some visualizations, you'll notice a stark difference with the quality of the analysis done with this specific tool. And for the other functionality, similar to other tools, it can generate video, it can actually make calls for you using the real-time API from OpenAI, it can engage in normal chat like you would with something like Abacus or Poe, and it has another feature called All Agents, which I'll get to shortly. On the advanced Agentic side, you have a few more functionalities like Agentic Deep Research, you have Agentic Fact Check, and you have the GenSpark Super Agent, which tries to marry the functionality of everything there. So you can imagine right now, these are all mutually exclusive modes, but over time, as more functionality gets added to this marketplace, you'd imagine that the Super Agent will now have even more functionality one, three, six months down the line. And the really powerful thing is the crossover between the different functionalities. So you'll go from doing deep research to generating a table, and maybe that table has some phone numbers. And because it has phone numbers, this now enables the functionality to use the calling using AI function on that specific table. And you keep seeing different layers of analysis and skills being put together in one shot. And then finally, you get to the basic agents, which in my opinion is heavily underrated because when it comes to the AI chat, image studio, or generating video, it's not just about choosing one model and allowing it to go back and forth and send the same question to multiple models. So if we take image or we take video, this mixture of agents feature becomes very powerful because now instead of sending the request to just the OpenAI image API, you can try a few different APIs at once and take the best result that suits your use case. And same thing with video, instead of just sending a video request to one specific engine, you get the benefit of trialing different agents, seeing what is the best result and choosing that one. And again, what's interesting about this tool from a big picture perspective is it's starting to integrate functionality from some of the biggest AI SaaS providers like Airtable, Clay, Synflow, Lovable, or something like Abacus AI. Now it's not a substitute for any of these tools in their full functionality yet, but it's doing a really good job at harnessing the most useful features from each one and combining them together. And in terms of use cases, we're gonna take a look at the following ones. We're first gonna test out its ability to put together web applications. Then we'll use the AI slides feature and see how good that works. And then we're gonna take a look at both video gen as well as image gen. And when it comes to image generation, we're gonna to try to create multiple lifestyle mockups at scale and see how well that works. And for their other functionalities, we're gonna take a look at their ability to do translation using multiple agents, as well as doing lead search and lead enrichment, and finally, data analysis. So by the end of these use cases, you should be able to see what I see, which is an AI Swiss knife in the making. So for the first magic trick, we put together a web app, and this is the prompt we sent over to GenSpark. Create a visually stunning, fully functional prompt engineering assistant web app with the following specs, and then I go through technical requirements, visual design, and then core functionality at the very bottom. This is the part that really matters, which is implement a real-time prompt analysis engine that evaluates and scores prompts, 
create dynamic template systems that insert content into the editor, build interactive guidance that responds to what the user is typing. And I add some more detail here. Obviously I had AI specifically perplexity. I asked it, Hey, act as a prompt engineer, go and look up the best practices for writing a prompt for GenSpark and put together this idea. So it came up with a lot of the granularity in my prompt. And in one shot, we got something like this, where if we click on view right here and we open this up in a brand new browser, it will be something akin to what you'd be able to generate on the first shot with either lovable, bolt, replit agent, etc. So in here, you can enter your OpenAI key. And then once you do so, you should be able to write a prompt and have AI generate that prompt. Or you can choose some form of template from here. Let's say detailed creative writing. You'll see some score at the bottom in terms of how detailed it is. And then it'll set some form of placeholders to help you better prompt in general, depending on the specific task. And you can see it came up with multiple tasks without my specific instruction. And every single time it has placeholders for where you should put any dynamic variables, which is super cool. Now I haven't fully battle tested how far you can push this tool in terms of adding a database, adding multiple functionalities, adding some form of webhook to NADN or make.com, but it's something I'll be diving into very shortly. And for the second feature, we put the AI slides feature to the test. And you'll see my prompt here is very basic, where all I said is create a beautiful slideshow exhibiting a new smart chair that tells you when you've been sitting down for too long and heats up the seats so you go for a walk. So you can probably tell I'm trying to build this for myself. And after that one prompt, pretty much with little to no additional instruction, we got something like this, where you have a very clean design for a slideshow. And what it's doing behind the scenes is it's using CSS and HTML to actually bring it to life. And as you go down, you'll see it's interactive as well. And it's pretty much production ready. Now you will find once in a while you get some errors like this, you see the syntax error, you could probably just resolve it by just asking it and prompting it but you'll see the general design is very clean, very advanced and akin to something you'd probably pay a freelancing agency to do. In terms of editing on every single slide. Now you can click on select to edit and select any singular element and switch that element. So If I want to say smart set two, right? You can actually switch that. You can also fact check any specific content that's on a particular slide, which is an interesting little feature. And then overall you can go back and forth to make this as pretty as possible. And most importantly, when you go to view and export, not only can you render it within the actual browser, but you can actually download it as both a PDF and a PowerPoint file as well. I was very excited for this next use case where I took a singular image I used O3 to generate and I tried to bring it to life using their generate video feature. Now I'm not too sure why this is in Espanol, but regardless, we use the mixture of agents function so that we could use multiple different video engines that you have at your disposal. So you have everything from Kling AI all the way to Minimax to if you scroll to the bottom using something like Gemini VO2, which is a very strong model as well. So we took this very simple image here and all we said is create a five to seven vertical nine by 16 aspect ratio promo video. And then the only inputs here is the sublime image. So again, nothing crazy on the prompting side. It went through some reflection to pass that same request to multiple different video agents. And then it came back with a few different versions here. One from Kling V 1.6, one from Gemini V02, which is actually really cool and probably well put together. You have Pixieverse, you have Lumi Labs, Dream Machine, and each one has a slightly different vibe and aesthetic. And you can keep going back and forth theoretically. And if you want to particularly zero in on a particular model, you can just say, I just want a specific one with Gemini V02, or I want a separate one just using runway. And in terms of additional features, you can choose a different aspect ratio, a different duration for time, as well as any stock images from their platform that you can add as well. For this use case, we use the AI sheets feature where all we did was load a few different images, specifically three images of AI generated bottles. And we asked the following very basic prompt for each of the image files, generate five lifestyle mockups. And then I provided a few different examples like gym setting, an office setting, hiking trail, yoga studio, etc. It took that, took a bit of time, and then it used the image API from OpenAI to structure it in a table where it's in a gym setting, office setting, etc. And when you click on view and export, you'll get a table like this where you can zoom in and see that exact same bottle in different settings like the gym, the office, if we scroll to the right here, 
You have office as well, it's pretty consistent. You can see trail, that same bottle. This one looks really high quality overall. Same with this, you can see the little shadow there on the left hand side. This one, it's not too bad. And then we go to the last ones, which is a yoga studio. You can see here, so you can imagine if you had 10 to 15 different SKUs of an e-commerce product and you didn't necessarily want to pay for product photos, this is a pretty effective way to do that just using AI. Now, when it comes to translation, this is a common task people try to use different LMs for to see which one translates the best. Now, typically, Claude is exceptionally gifted at understanding the nuances of language when it comes to translation. But what's useful is I basically provided this fictitious chapter from a book that doesn't exist. And I just said translate. And what it did is it used Google Translate, uh, DeepL, which is a deep learning model trained on translation, GPT-40, Claude 3.5 Sonnet. And then it went through all of them and then basically created a committee to come up with a reflection of how it should translate our text here from English to French. And the result, if you can read French, is actually a very good translation. And what's interesting here is if you didn't like the actual translation itself, you can just click on Google Translate and see what it specifically outputted. Same thing with something like DeepL, or you could go directly to Claude 3.5 Sonnet. And if you wanted to double check what the reflection was and which agent it weighed more than the other, you can go through the rationale here to better understand what happened. And for the next use case, this is where we took a look at its ability to take a lead sheet and enrich it and do some analysis on it. So my prompt here was build a lead sheet of Toronto based companies likely to buy AI automation services. Do some web search using LinkedIn, Crunchbase, public hiring boards, etc. And then for each company return the following columns, company name, industry, contact, first name, last title, a valid email, a direct phone number, a LinkedIn URL, employee size count of the company, whether or not the phone number is validated and it's legitimate, and then sort by valid phone number. And what you get is something like this, which looks very Airtable-esque, that has different columns with different tags. It does deep research to come up with the company name, first and last name, an email, a phone number, and look at this. You can use AI to actually call that person for you. And if you click on call for you, it'll register your actual phone number and send an AI caller to send that particular contact a personalized call. And beyond that, you have a LinkedIn URL that in many cases, by the way, is valid. And even when it came to emails, it didn't just generate fake emails. It only provided an email when it was a valid one. If you look at the different tabs here, you'll see that it has a subset of this data set where it's validated the phone number again, just to double check. And if you want to go to the next step and visualize this table even more, when you click on visualize, it will draft yet another prompt to do more data analysis and create an HTML tool to better visualize it. So similar to our very first example, it might create a very light web app to better demonstrate any trends or consistencies it's seeing in the data. And the last use case, being a data scientist by background, I absolutely had to try its ability at ingesting a data set and taking that data set and doing deep analysis on it. So my prompt here was the following. I'm loading the following file called monthly metrics, which is a fictitious file put together using GPT. For each metric, calculate the year to date average target versus actual flag any metric where actual deviates plus or minus 10% and then build a gauge chart per metric and draft an alert email to the owner email for breach metrics in a new column called alert email. So what we're saying here is if we have multiple metrics and you have an actual value that's way bigger than your target value, then we should be notified by that. Now this request specifically took around 10 minutes, but once it was done, it generated this beautiful table right here where we have all of our actual data and then you have all of the tabulated data to the right. So you have percent deviation, year to date average target, year to date average actual, and it'll tell you which ones yielded some form of alert. So is this a breached alert? If so, it creates a personalized email that would be sent to the email owner. And just using this example, imagine you're doing lead gen for a particular industry, you could theoretically create a bunch of tailored emails for each and every contact. And if you go to the other tables it put together, it put an overall TLDR summary table on all these metrics. It goes through monthly metrics again at a finer grain. It creates a subset pivot table on just the rows that correspond to being breached and which individuals should be emailed. 
And then it keeps going more and more in depth and basically zeroing in on every part of our request. And with that, these are seven use cases of honestly tons more that you can experiment with. So highly recommend you at least take this for a spin and see if it's another tool you can add to your arsenal. And if you wanna see even more use cases that myself and my community put together, we actually took the mixture of agents and tried to crank out all kinds of N8N -N workflows without any form of knowledge base using a one-shot prompt. So if that interests you, along with the tons of other experiments we do pretty much every day in my paid community, check out the second link in the description below, and maybe I'll see you inside. I'll see you in the next one.